Looking at and also understanding other people's code can be a very daunting task, but it's also highly beneficial in your programming career. So let's talk about this in this video. Hello, welcome to Reso Coder, where you are getting prepared for real app development so that you will get freelance clients or a job and be confident about the apps you built. So subscribe and hit the bell to join us on our quest for becoming in demand Flutter developers. So looking at other people's code, what can be so hard about it? You can write code yourself. You've learned on Resell Coder how to create Flutter apps and how to structure your code properly. So you should be good, right? Joining into a new team is not a huge issue. Like everybody's code is basically written in the same language, which in the case of Flutter is the Dart programming language. So what's the issue, right? Uh, well, the issue is that although the programming language which is used in the project is indeed the same one, Dart in this case, the way that someone can use Dart is uh, diametrically different from uh, what you are using Dart for and how you are using Dart in your projects. Because the thing is, it's not the programming language that's difficult to learn. It's the paradigms which you use with that programming language which are difficult to understand and comprehend fully. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, Dart is not hard to learn in itself. You can get Dart syntax down in just a few hours, basically, if you are coming from a different language like Java, C Sharp, Kotlin, JavaScript, whatever. If you are coming from a statically typed language, so JavaScript is probably not a good example, sorry, JavaScript, maybe something like TypeScript, at least, going into a language like Dart, you just really have to learn the curly braces, syntax, now extension methods, and that's about it. Like it has some new features or specific features to Dart, like mix-ins, about which you can check out the tutorial from the cart in the corner right here. But otherwise than that, uh, Dart is not that difficult. What is difficult though, is to learn how to architect your apps on the high level and also on the low level. So if you have seen my clean architecture tutorial series, which you can also check out from the card in the corner, you know that it's not all that straightforward to set out a path in which your app will be architected. Clean architecture is just one way of creating your apps, but you can also use a different nomenclature with domain driven design, which is basically the same as clean architecture, but there are a few differences here and there. You can also create spaghetti code, which is probably the worst option of them all. You can also just uh, omit the use case layer. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, that's fine. If not, that doesn't really matter, but you can omit certain layers of your architecture and uh, then just, uh, for example, do all of your business logic inside your state management layer. So you, that could be, for example, change notifier. And of course, there is the immense plethora of options to choose from when it comes to state management. So the team which you are joining or the freelance project which you are maybe like uh, going into after some other freelancer has left that project can be written with block change notifier uh, mobx states rebuilder uh, whatever it can be built with pure rx dart view models and there are observables everywhere and uh, all that of course, now there wouldn't be observables, there would be just streams since RxDart 0.23 just came out in December last year, but uh, you get the point, right? So once you get into this kind of a project, it can become quite frustrating because you do not know how to orient yourself in that project. You don't know where to look. Of course, if you are joining a team which is following some good code practices, it's going to be easier. That's a given thing. Like, you know, when somebody writes spaghetti code, well, good luck following that kind of a code around and knowing what it does. But when someone follows some 
predefined code structure, you are going to be able to find your way around that new code base, but it's still going to be a pretty tough endeavor. Nevertheless, the first thing is run the tests. Of course, this applies only to projects which are actually tested. Hopefully those projects which you are working on are tested if you are just joining the team as a new member or you are a new freelancer on a project. If they are not, uh, well, that kind of sucks. This step doesn't apply to you. But if there are tests, run the tests and more importantly, explore the innards of the tests because tests are the best possible documentation. And if you go step by step through each test case, you are going to find out things which you would otherwise spend a lot more time in order to find them out. When you think about it, tests have to have some sort of a description and they have to be detailed enough that something is actually tested. And when you look at the expectations which should be fulfilled in the test, well, as soon as you understand expectations which are given in the test, you understand the code which is being tested, right? That kind of makes sense. So really the first step is to go through the tests, of course, given that there are some tests to begin with. Even if your code base does not have any kind of a test suite already pre-built for you, you can still utilize this next step, which I'm going to talk about. And that is to look at the, for example, if you want to understand the state management, which is being used in your app, which you are now part of, do not try to understand the state management solution as it is implemented in the app, which you are working on take that state management solution, break it down into the most simple usable code possible. So basically build your own project on the side with that state management solution. And then you will understand how it works even in that bigger project, which you have just joined the team for. And of course, if you are using something like block, there are already some amazing documented um, like projects, which you can check out. I'm of course talking about the block library, not really about the block uh, vanilla uh, state management solution because that kind of sucks, but the block library is pretty awesome. Also, if you are using a change notifier, of course, there are going to be a lot of examples. MobX is the same. But if you are using something which is kind of exotic, which is my case, uh, I'm actually now part of a team which uses uh, pure rx dart for state management. So then you really do not have some sort of an example because rx dart and its operators and like those functions which use on observables and all of that stuff. Nobody can really provide you with a complete example for that thing. Because you know, uh, it's just a library which is not really used for state management by itself. It can be used for that, but nobody is like going to show you everything you can do. There are some to do MVC from Brian Egan on GitHub. So those projects can be helpful, but they are still not going to tell you much. So in that case, when you really do not have some sort of a predefined example, which you can follow for the given state management solution, which your app is using. And of course, this does not only apply to state management, this also applies to whatever else your app may be doing, which you are not familiar with. I'm just going with the state management example, uh, for the sake of an example here. So if that kind of a thing happens, we have something non traditional, which you need to understand, just build out a simple side project, really something which interests you with that kind of an architecture. And you are going to be able to understand this kind of a thing much quicker than just by looking at the already existing code base, you are kind of like uh, worried about breaking something, of course, you do not have to push all of your changes to the repository, even if you change something up. But yeah, you are kind of like afraid to break the code and you do not really want to mess with it because you don't understand all of the parts. So it's probably not the best idea to learn the new thing on that code base, which is the production code base, which you are working on. Instead, learn that new thing, for example, state management in this case, on your own small project. 
And lastly, of course, do not hesitate to ask. The people who know their way around in the code base will be very happy to help you out understanding what's going on. Of course, when you are hired to be a Flutter developer uh, with some kind of an experience already present, like at least that's expected, and you start asking about how to create a for loop, well, uh, I mean, do not ask that. Rather, watch a tutorial if you are completely clueless about some really basic stuff like that. But if you ask some really high level architecture question, or you cannot just find something in the code base, or you are unsure how to implement some sort of a algorithm which you are not really used to work with, well, that's perfect. That's awesome. And the people who are on that project as lead developers or owners or whatever there is on your kind of project, they're going to be very happy to answer those questions for you. Of course, if you have those kind of people, if you are just taking a project after some sort of a freelancer who left and that freelancer is nowhere to be found, well, that sucks. But, uh, you know, if you are just joining a regular development team, that's probably not going to be the case. So if there are some people who can help out, just ask, do not be afraid to ask, and they will be very happy to answer your questions, at least for the most part, if there are some thought out questions and not just some stupidness, because you know, it shows that you are interested in that project. So why would they not be happy to help you? Of course, people are people are people. So you may uh, encounter some not good behavior if you ask. But for the most part, I think at least when it comes to my experiences, people are gonna be happy to answer your questions when you ask proper question. And also do not forget about Dash here. So maybe you when you ask Dash, he's gonna answer some of the questions. But I heard that he doesn't really answer questions about uh, architecture or something high level as that he's really only well versed in uh, the widget code. So if you have some sort of an animation problem, or you really do not know how to compose widgets, just ask Dash. But uh, if you have architecture problems, then probably not his uh, He's not very well. Uh, yeah. And if you are serious about becoming a great Flutter developer who can build apps for clients or at the job, go to flutter.education and link is also in the video description to get the top curated Flutter news and resources aimed at improving your app development career. Over there, you can also subscribe to my mailing list to get the top curated Flutter news and resources delivered every single week right into your inbox. If this video helped you at least a bit to understand some sort of a new code base, give it a like and also share it with other developers who are surely gonna find it beneficial too. Leave a comment down below if you have anything to say and I'll see you in the next video.